Hello and welcome to Sorted Food. Hello. Hi. Today we've got another pretentious ingredients episode where we've got Barry, he's a normal, and Ben, he's a chef. They're going to try some ingredients and determine whether or not they think they are pretentious ingredients. We're going to offer so much insight from the side, aren't we? We are. Feeling good? Yep. Feeling judgy? Yep. Excellent. Lift the cloche. I lifted that cloche with some vigour and with it came a lot of aroma. That is one chunky fresh pod of vanilla, I presume. Vanilla. It looks like a very girthy vanilla pod. Yes, Barry, these are Tahitian vanilla pods. Grown in the Riotea island of French Polynesia, these vanilla pods are cultivated using plant compost made from coconut palms and coconuts producing long and fleshy beans with delicious caramel and anise flavours. Wow, okay, so that is no normal vanilla pod. Do you know about vanilla species? Not at all. I didn't know there were that many. One is the vanilla planifolia, which is the Madagascan variety. It originated in Mexico, but the French originally cultivated it in Madagascar. Now it's cultivated all across the world, but hence why it's called Madagascan vanilla. Vanilla tahitensis is the Tahitian variety, which is a hybrid evolving from the original vanilla planifolia when it was grown in Tahiti. Thus, Tahitensis. Tastes completely different. It smells incredible and it is one of the softest, fleshiest pods I've poked for a while. <laughs> Should we put something in his mouth so he can't talk? Yeah, let's, great idea. Oh, Ooh. very nice. Barry. We've made you a strawberry tart. It's got creme diplomat in it, and we used an entire vanilla pod for the batch of creme diplomat. And we macerated the strawberries in salt and sugar and another entire vanilla pod so that you got the full vanilla flavour. Wow, no expense spared. I know how expensive vanilla is. Mm. May I? We'll see about that. We'll see. So there is a fair old bit of vanilla in that because we really want you to taste any differences that you can know. So here's the thing I have against vanilla and that's its poor reputation because it has been stigmatised as being vanilla and boring and yet when it is celebrated like that it is sublime. It does taste like there's something else mixed into it. It's almost like there is a, a fruitiness to it. It tasted really of cherry to me. Yeah, I got a lot of cherry. cherry. I don't think I've ever tasted vanilla like that. From what I understand, the vanilla plant is an orchid that basically needs to be hand pollinated one day in a whole year. And if you don't do it on that one day, you don't get a harvest. So it's tricky, hence why it is so expensive. The premium range of a supermarket, two Madagascan vanilla pods, six pounds. So essentially three pounds per pod. Yep. How much do you think we paid per pod for the Tahitian vanilla? Six, six pound a pod seems like a lot, but I imagine it reaches that price because there's not enough of them in the world and the people who do want them know why they're worth that and would pay it. Six pound a pod. I reckon there are three pods worth in that, so straight away, minimum, is gonna be nine pounds. We're in a pretentious video. It's a very rare item, so let's triple that again. That seems silly. <laughs> After the reaction, that now seems silly. 16 pounds. Actually works out at seven pounds thirty per pod. Okay, cool. It's a fundamental ingredient in baking, um, so I feel like you're paying then just for the quality of it. And if this is the highest of quality, then I don't think that makes it pretentious. It's just in short supply, high demand, and it takes a lot to get it to that stage. Not pretentious, just very expensive. Started off strong, boys. Lift the cloche. Ooh, and here we go. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> and sauce it is so barry as well. Yeah, 100%. He's probably already got it, that's why. Should it be that colour? <laughs> um, all right, so we have crystals. Is it a rock salt? It looks like some fictional gemstone that you could ward off dragons with. <laughs> Mm, well, as soon as I put it in my mouth, I, mm, it's just, it's salt. These are Persian blue salt rocks, the rarest and most exclusive salt on the planet. They are beautiful. Extracted from a salt mine in northern Iran, 
The colour comes from the formation of the crystal structure under intense pressure. The crystals fracture the light, creating the optical illusion of a shimmering blue jewel. The salt has a silky sweetness that works beautifully when grated with a grater over salads and truffle dishes. Wait for it. This is where oh. it gets even more Barry. We thought you might carry that in your pocket or something. <laughs> on your key ring. Grab it. He has got one. People can't see. You've got one. Oh, shut up. I was looking for one of these for wasabi the other day. Have it. Because Barry's already got one. No lie. I would compare it to what I would associate with a good sea salt. It's got a minerality to it beyond just sodium chloride, but not hugely different, no. It's a bit of theatre to the table. I think that bit I get. Would you like to taste a dish topped with some of this rare salt? Yeah. Could say, yeah. Fantastic. Bring it. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yummy. Barry, we have made you a beef tata straight out of our very own cookbook, How We Cook. It's a classic dish with some brioche on the side. I'm having a really nice day. Are you? Yeah, I'm enjoying this. Riff salt started by a Swede um, who was in a teppanyaki restaurant in Beijing. And he was inspired by the big ginger grater and using the rock salt. So sort of combined that with Scandi design and came up with the Riff Salt brand. After over a decade of doing this, we still come across things to today that are new to us and that we learn. And it's a talking point. That's its purpose, surely. Actually, do you know, by approaching it like that, you're not setting it up to be anything that it's not. That is an amazing dish. Every part of it should be celebrated, even at a final flourish. So what better way to as a funnel flourish, then a little grating of rib salt on top. I like it. Should we talk about price? I'm going to give you a frame of reference. And uh, that is Molden Sea Salt Flakes. We use those a lot. For 250 grams of Molden, it's £2.20 or £8.80 a kilo. How much does that weigh? You have 150 grams there. I wouldn't be surprised if they're two pounds a rock. So let's say six pounds. I think this is probably 10 times at 22 pounds for those three. Oh mate, you're in luck. It's 15 pounds 95. Oh. 106 pounds a kilo. I mean, that's still a lot <laughs> for salt. <laughs> an ornament, as much as it is an ingredient. Well, in that case, Persian blue salt rocks, pretentious or not. This isn't pretentious, but I don't know what is. The idea and the story around this one feels a bit more pretentious, and I don't know how I can justify that based on the same logic with the vanilla, which I thought was not. But I think this might be. Lift the clash. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's go, go. Nice snails. Yes. Good job. I do like snails when they're covered in garlic and parsley and butter and you can't taste the snail. <laughs> uh, they actually come in a presentation tin and empty shell gift set. And snails are considered something of a French delicacy, often referred to as escargot, and frequently cooked with butter, finely chopped shallots, garlic, parsley, salt and pepper. The environment of which you eat a snail in is usually quite pretentious. It's usually high-end restaurants is what I'd associate snails to be in. But actually, as an ingredient, I mean, you couldn't get any more basic. I like the idea of snails because of their tradition. And I've had them in France a few times before over the years. Shall we give you an opportunity to get over the fact that they're snails in a cooked dish? Please. I think you're gonna like it. What is that? I love, I love the presentation, I must say. This is beautiful. You've seen what's in front of you? Yeah. I kind of assume that you know what that is a version of. I presume this is snail porridge. It is. He's a chef. It's not the snail porridge but it is our interpretation. Yeah, this one's got four Michelin porridge. stars. <laughs> Lovely. A very famous dish by Heston. 
So it's the it's like the stock that the snails are cooked in. Okay. They're, they're braised for a very very long time, <laughs> and then it's mixed in with herbs and uh, and it's cooked as a porridge with with oats. I can't believe that you were feeling a bit squeamish about snails, and then we serve up a delicious green snail porridge, and it still isn't making you salivate. Unreal. So good, isn't it? Absolutely yummy. Melt in the mouth which so often they can be like bullets um, and a bit rubbery. Those have been braised for a very long time, four to five hours. Now this absolutely is not a traditional look at how snails are used. I mean, they make up parts of ragouts in France, um, as well as being served with parsley, garlic, butter, etc. Paellas in Spain, all over Europe. So, you know, where are you leaning at the moment? This actually is giving me goosebumps a little bit. Sometimes when you have food that takes you by surprise, it makes your, your hairs in the back of your neck stand up a little bit. Like it genuinely excites me. But they're delicious and they are not pretentious. No matter what the price. Oh, no matter what the price. There is this perception that tinned or canned food is generally cheaper. We disproved that when we looked at things like the duck, uh, the confit duck in a tin that was French and actually well sourced and was a great product in a tin. Eight quid? 300 grams. These are priced at 9 dollars No. It's good, because it's, for us, it's a novelty. To spend 10 quid on some snails is a, I think that's a bargain. That feels expensive for something you can dig up in the garden. <laughs> I wonder what the species is and whether you could just go and pick them from the end of your garden. You're not the first person who said that today. Oh. Pretentious or not? Not, not pretentious. No, just not celebrated enough in the UK. Not pretentious. But you like them. Yes still on 100%. Last one, Baz. Give the cloche a lift. That is a lot of mustard. <laughs> Stick with the French theme. Moutard. Is it just standard mustard? Would it looks it. I mean, that's whole grain mustard. <laughs> okay, that's some fiery mustard. It tastes like mustard. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a musty burn. Oh, it gets younger. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm talking about. I love whole grain mustard. To the point where I will slather my ham sandwich with a good thick layer of it. Because I can't get it hot enough. We found it. It's got to have, it's either the high, really high quality mustard seeds or like mega fresh to make it that powerful. Or it's got something else in it. Some form of alcohol, which also gives it acidity. It is alcohol. This is Pommery Royale Mustard with Cognac. Cognac? Pommery Royale Mustard with Cognac is a heavenly combination of gourmet whole grain mustard and luxurious cognac. I go through quite a lot of mustard at home. I'd probably go through a jar a month. Do you think you would go through this jar? Oh no, I wouldn't go through that jar. That's a big jar. <laughs> Who doesn't love a wax seal on something? I, I dream the day one day I can get a letter through the post with a, with a seal like that on top. It's really nice that he remembered our wedding invitations. Oh, that's where I saw it! Done, done the right occasion. It's, sometimes it can be a little bit tacky, but <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, the brand of this particular mustard, Moutard de Meaux, um, are from Meaux, a cathedral town about 60 kilometres west of Paris, which is a town famous for producing mustard. Not as famous as Dijon. Well, okay, can you taste the cognac in it? No. No, you can't, can you, really? It's so... I couldn't identify it. Well, want to try it with the Yes. Dish? Ben, we've cooked you something delicious. I say that, me and Mike have done nothing. This is pan roasted pork fillet with a mustard cream sauce. Super, super delicious. Oh, wow, it looks good. That sauce looks amazing. This, it's not attacking me in the same pleasurable way. <laughs> um, with a paddle but I'm still getting the warmth, just as pleasurable. Ebers, are we even teetering on the edge of pretentious here? I feel like it's such a French thing, like l'escargot, that just because it's not normal to us, we think it must be pretentious because it's from the home of cuisine. But it's not, it's just traditional and yummy and delicious. Very, very special. Okay, Barry. Taking everything into consideration, the taste, where it's from, the jar, the wax seal, which is classy <laughs> when done for wedding invites. <laughs> How much 
would you think that this jar of 500 grams of mustard cost? To give you a bit of a reference point, a premium mustard brand that we bought from a supermarket um, in a 210 gram jar was £1.30 for the jar. So that's 62p per 100 grams. <laughs> so it's about double the price, that's my guess. So let's just say this is around six quid. If that was 18 quid, I'll take the rest of the jar off your hands. Wow. Holy guacamole. It's nearly half that, it's 9.99. That is a bargain. I just I was just scaling it up based on the size of it. So yeah, two and a bit times more expensive, but tasted, in my opinion, more than two and a bit times better. I think I was hoping for six pounds, if I'm honest. I love it. Barry Taylor, pretentious or not, the mustard we're talking about. <laughs> but comment below. If it's a great quality ingredient, it's made well, and it does for the tin, it's not pretentious. But because it's served in 500 grams with a wax top, it is delicious. I do want the whole jar, and it is pretentious. So by sticking to their roots, by wax sealing with the cork, he thinks hundreds of years worth of craftsmanship. History. In fact, but Barry Taylor is literally saying, history is pretentious. I, I don't think it is. I think it's again, exquisite. Damn. Damn. But we've had 100% ever satisfaction. I have been so happy today. Well, over to you guys. Did you like any of those ingredients? Did you think they were pretentious? Comment below, let us know. And let us know what ingredients we should review next in the comments. As always, join in the conversation over on Twitter with the hashtag sorted pretentious. We have a juggernaut of a cookbook on the way. The Ultimate Cooking Battles Normals Edition features fantastic recipes assembled from our battle videos, rewritten especially for this illustrated cookbook. Sorted Club members can pre-order a copy right now with a discount. And if you're not a member, don't worry, you can sign up now for free in a flash and get the amazing Meal Packs app and get the discount on the book. Shazam! How marvellous is that? I tried to look at you really hard the whole way through so that people, like, really shipped us.